Would y'all just pray with me just a, a minute? Heavenly Father, we need you. Like never before, we need you. We need to hear from heaven, Lord, from your heart. And Lord, without you, we, can, we can't do anything. We are powerless and helpless. But with you, Lord, we can do all things. Lord, you know the needs. You know our hearts. You know our thoughts even before we think them. You know, Lord, even what's in the hidden part of man, Lord. So we just ask you, Lord, that you speak to us. I, I don't have the words, Lord, if you don't speak. Lord, that's what we need. We need you to speak and give us ears to hear. Hearts to perceive and understand in this hour that we're living in, Lord. We thank you for your mercies. We thank you for your grace. We thank you because you are Lord and you are faithful and you are good. Hallelujah. We praise you for your power. We praise you for your glory. We thank you, Lord, for what you have given us in your name, Lord God. We praise you for that. We are blessed beyond measure because of you, Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed beyond measure because of you. Lord, we're not talking about money, Lord. We're not talking about the things, Lord God, but what we possess in you, Lord God. What you have given us in Christ Jesus. We are blessed beyond measure, Lord, and we praise you for that, and we thank you for it. So we pray this morning, Lord, that you give us, Lord, your desire. Give us direction and help us, Lord, to hear and obey. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord to be back in uh, International one more time. Glory to God. Amen. Uh, we are thankful, thankful to be here with you, and um, it's just a blessing to be here. I do want to share, before I start anything, uh, first of all, thank you all for praying uh, for our son. Um, we didn't know where he was since... Uh, since July, since the 13th of July, he just kind of disappeared off of the map. And we couldn't get in touch with him in any way. And um, Wednesday, just to make a long story short, we don't, but Wednesday evening, we talked to him on the phone. Out of the wild blue, he called his aunt and and gave her his number. And so we called the number and we got to talk to him. So he still needs a lot of prayer, brothers and sisters. He needs a lot of prayer. But we thank God that he's alive. He's alive. And so and God is still protecting him. So we are truly thankful for that um, and the amazing thing we didn't I asked my daughter because she was supposed to put something on Facebook I don't do Facebook but anyway she's supposed to put something on Facebook I said you put anything on Facebook she said no I didn't never got a chance and you didn't do anything no I didn't do anything he just out of the wild blue just called and so 
I just believe God nudged him and said, you better talk to somebody. <laughs> so, so we're thankful for that. Um, this morning, uh, I'm going to share with you from a couple of passages of scripture. The first passage of scripture is in John chapter, I mean, Luke chapter 3. Uh, starting at verse 21. And from there, I would like to go to John chapter 1. In Luke chapter 3, starting at verse 21, it says, Now when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Jesus also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open. And the Holy Ghost descended in a bodily shape like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, which said, Thou art my beloved son, in thee I am well pleased. Now we usually stop there. But you see, 23, and Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli, which was the son of Matat, which was the son of Levi, which was the son of Melchi. And we just go on through the genealogies. I won't, won't bore you with all of the genealogies, but I just want to go down to verse 37. It says, which was the son of Methuselah, which was the son of Enoch which was the son of Jared, which was the son of Maliliel, which was the son of Cainan, which was the son of Enos, which was the son of Seth, which was the son of Adam, which was the son of God. John 1, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Going down to verse 10. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power or the right to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Hallelujah. One final text from Hebrews uh, chapter 2. Hebrews chapter 2, starting at verse 9. Says, but we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, that by the grace of God should taste death for every man. For it became him for whom are all things and by whom are all things in bringing many sons unto glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through suffering. 
for both he that sanctifieth and they who are sanctified are all of one. For this cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren, saying, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the church will I sing praise unto thee. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children which God hath given me. Verse 14. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is, the devil. Praise God for his word. All that we see here uh, concerning the sons of God, uh, tremendous. Um, so I'm going to share something with you and then, uh, well, I'll share, I'll just share the, the topic, the thought that I have this morning. And the thought I want to share is uh, our final uh, our finest, I'm sorry, our finest hour. This could be our finest hour. Now, I had another topic, but the thought as I was thinking, uh, what we are facing, uh, the United States is not facing it alone. It's all over the world. Everything that's happening here is happening where we are. Um, it used to be that Colombia was always like about five years or so behind. But now we're just experiencing everything in real time like you. <laughs> I mean, whatever goes on here is happening there. You see it here, it's happening over there. Every, everything you see over there, over here, it's happening over there. And so it's, it's, it's uh, technology has changed everything. And uh, technology along with the pandemic has changed a whole lot of things. But what I want to share with you uh, is a, a thought. And so I looked it up and I found it. And it's something that Winston... Churchill said, on June 18th, 1940, in the House of Commons, uh, Germany was attacking everywhere and, and, and everybody was going down, looked like Hitler might win. And this is what um, part of his speech, I didn't put the whole speech, I just put this one little section. What he said, uh, on June 8th, 1940, before Britain uh, began to put a, uh, to fight uh, Germany. He said, I expect that the battle of Britain is about to begin. Upon this battle depends the survival of Christian civilization. Upon it depends our own British life and the long continuity of our institutions and our empire. The whole fury and might of the enemy must very soon be turned upon us. Think about that. The whole fury and might of the enemy must very soon be turned on us. Hitler knows that he will have to break us in this island or lose the war. If we can stand up to him, Think about that. If we can stand up to him, all Europe may be free and the life of the world may move forward into broad sunlit uplands. But if we fail, then the whole world, including the United States, 
including all that we have known and cared for, will sink into the abyss of a new dark age made more sinister and perhaps more protracted by the lights of perverted science. Let us therefore brace ourselves to our duties and so bear ourselves that if the British Empire and its commonwealth last for a thousand years, men will still say this was their finest hour. You need to think about that. Churchill didn't say, no, the enemy's not coming. Churchill didn't pamper the British people. He said, I understand you're afraid, but no. He said, the enemy's coming. And everything depends on whether we can stand or not. Hitler is coming. The devil is coming. Uh-huh. And the enemy knows that he will have to take us if he's going to win this war. See? He knows he has to break us. Or he's going to lose this war. I see so many parallels to, to the church. That's why it inspired me. I see so many parallels. The enemy is coming. The devil is coming. He knows that he's going to have to break us. You yeah, think about that. He has to break us if he's going to win this war. Now, what does it mean to break us? You know, not that we don't cry or not that we don't have struggles. And he's not trying to, to, to just give us struggles and discourage us. He's after something. See, he's after something. I had a conversation uh, with some, uh, a, a good Christian brother. I had a conversation and it just occurred to me. I said, one of the things about the United States is it's just too much information. It's just too much information. And, and, and we were talking in the context of the church. I said, it's just too much information. And a pastor is going to have to come to a point whether he trusts the information or trusts God. He's going to have to come to a point where he's going to think, understand whether the information is viable or what God has said is viable. He's going to have to come to a point where, you know, all that intelligence is fine, but I'm going to stand on the word. All, 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 all those graphs and things that you got, that, that's, that's all nice and well, but I'm going to stand on the rock. All that you're talking about is okay, but I'm going to stand on the name of Jesus. So, so we are in a battle. We are in a battle. And the enemy has risen up like never before. And his desire is to break us. Now, when we talk about breaking, now let me repeat it. We're not talking about just getting down and just, you know, sometimes getting discouraged. We're not talking about that. We're talking about what you're standing on, what you're believing, where are we... He, The Bible says 
where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, if you research that, the, 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 that Hebrew word means revelation. Where there is no revelation, the, 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 the Amplified Bible in the New King James Version uh, says it, where there is no revelation, the people are unrestrained. Where there is no revelation, the people are unrestrained. Scripture is a revelation from God. We, we got we to gotta remember that what we have here, it doesn't matter what the cover looks like, but what's inside is a revelation from God. I got one Bible here, got all these notes in it, that, that, but those notes don't matter, a, a hill of beans. What matters is what the Word says. I don't care what, what, what John MacArthur or, 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 or whoever else has anything, Chuck Swindoll, y'all like them, that's okay, you know, and everybody can say what they want, but this is revelation. See, we would never have known that God created the heavens and the earth if he didn't tell us. We would never have known that he breathed life into us. Amen. Now, th there you go. Just just, just because it came to my mind. Life belongs to God. It doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to me. Life belongs to God. Now that's something to think about because God, it's God's life. It's God's breath. And, 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 and what's keeping us here on this planet is God. What's keeping us breathing is God. If you, don't, if you don't believe me, ask, you know, when you get a chance, ask Herod. When he was uh, walking in and the people were saying, it's a God, it's a God. And all of a sudden, Herod said, drops dead and the worms eat him up. Why? Because it was God. God decided no more of you and just took his life. As Nebuchadnezzar, as Nebuchadnezzar, isn't this great Babylon that I have built? God said, okay, that's enough for you too. Took his senses. He went crazy the same instant and walk around like an animal. And when God decided, he said, okay, you can have your brain back. See, I'm this is God's life. He does what he wants. And so it's God who, who takes a woman from nowhere and, and, and says, you're going to have a son. And his name will be Jesus. And he, well, how is that going to happen? Well, the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And the power of the highest is going to come upon you. And, and, and that which will be conceived in your womb will be called the Son of God. Why? How? Because God can. See? Because God can. And so he, sh so, wow. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lot here on my heart, you know. But the word of God is the, re this is a revelation from God. Peter says in 2 Peter 1, 20 and 21, Peter says, knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So they said, so this word didn't come to us just because somebody saw something and wrote it. No, this word didn't come to us because somebody thought about something and wrote it down. This word didn't come through 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 uh, studying the, the Hebrew scripture because there wasn't any at first. But God spoke. He spoke to to Moses and he spoke 
to Joshua and he spoke to to Samuel and he spoke to to Isaiah and Jeremiah and he he spoke to them and told them he spoke to Ezekiel and he told all of them what to say he spoke to the apostles and gave them what to write he 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 dealt with their hearts and began to lead them how to write so this this word is a revelation from God. Now, why do I start with that? Because we have a problem with revelation. We don't like that word. I understand. I understand that, that, that some people who claim to have a revelation have said some far out things and have done some far out things and have uh, taken people's money and all that stuff. We don't like the word revelation. We don't want to we, you know, we don't want to be ostracized by a certain group of people. But if this word is a revelation, then you and I need to live by the revelation that God has given us. See, we need we need to live by what God has revealed to us. So as we start uh, thinking about uh, this thing, uh, 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 revelation, uh, we've got to understand. I, I, I just shared this with you because I, I shared it with our church a while back and it kind of confused them for a minute. But just like we said, if God breathed life into man. If your life belongs to God, then there is no such thing as human autonomy. Are you hearing me? The, no such thing as human autonomy. Now, we, you know, we think, you know, we can do what we want. We because we, I already told you, you can't. It's only God and his mercy who let you go as far as you're going. I mean, what, I, I'm just thinking, my son just disappeared out of nowhere. And who made him call? I just believe God did. He can't, I mean, we didn't put a notice on. I thought they put the notice out on Facebook. We said, well, how did he get, did he see something? Or he, didn't, he heard something inside and said, Call somebody and tell them where you at. So, so, so God can do what He wants. He can, He can take a a a, a black man from South Carolina who don't know any Spanish at all and send him to South America. But, 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 but he don't know Spanish. He'll learn. <laughs> But he don't know the culture. He'll learn. But he don't know what to do. He'll learn. Cause I'm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Uh, I don't. I don't know how many Spanish people are here today. But I'd be. I'd love to have a conversation with you. <laughs> but but the, the the point is that that all that time God has been giving us a revelation. I can keep you. I can provide for you. I can work through you in the midst of your ignorance. Of course, you don't know Spanish, but I know Spanish. <laughs> and I can teach you how to speak Spanish. And don't worry, the people there, they're friendly. They'll help you out a little bit. But I'm just saying God can do whatever he wants. So there's no such thing as human autonomy. Okay. G and just so you, 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 you understand this, is, this is so important. John 17 and 2, Jesus says, As thou hast given him power over all flesh, as you have given him authority over all flesh, that's saved flesh, that's born again flesh, that's unsaved flesh, that's, you know, all flesh that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. So Jesus has authority over all flesh. So just that simple fact, there's no human autonomy. And because there's no human autonomy, there is no neutrality. No autonomy and no neutrality. Well, I just don't know. Well, you can't use that excuse because, because Romans chapter 1 tells us, uh, or chapter 2, Paul says that he has showed them the invisible things of God. He has shown 
them. Well, 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 nobody told me. You got evidence. So, so we talk about all these things, uh, 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 but there's no human autonomy and there's no neutrality. Now, I say these things, and I guess I need to make it clear what I'm talking about because I shared that thing with Winston Churchill to let you know we are in a battle. It's a war, and it's not a culture war. This is a war of the spirit, and the sons of God are in it. And this is what I've been just, God has just been speaking to my heart a lot about it because we face a lot of things. I mean, we face a whole bunch of things. Um, but, but just that, that you are in a war. You cannot rest. Your time will come. You will be able to rest. Just not now. You must keep going. Okay. You might take a break for a minute, but you can't stop fighting. You must keep your armor on. You must keep your head in the battle. You must not lose sight of what is happening. You must not take your eyes off of me. I'll give you what to do. I know who's fighting you. I know who's resisting you. I know who's coming at you. But there's a reason for that, and that's because I want to work through you. So you cannot give up. You, he cannot have this territory if you don't give up international he cannot have this territory if you don't give up he cannot have your home if you don't give up he cannot have your family if you don't give up he cannot have your life if you don't give up he cannot have your children if you don't give up The devil can't keep running rapid if the church does not give up. Now, we see all this craziness and people are saying, where is the church? Well, see, that's, that's, that's the point. That's the point. If, if the church decides, you know what? It's time to fight. We don't need to be culturally relevant. We need to be divinely relevant. We need to be relevant with the kingdom. We need to know what God is saying and act on what God is saying. See? And we need to maintain our ears open to the voice of God and not listen to all these other voices. Too much information. Too much information. I, I, I know you're not, they, they told me you're not supposed to take more than 25 or 30 minutes because it's on, on the internet and all that, you know, so. Um, I, I don't care, I'm not interested in the internet. I mean, I <laughs> That's how you reach people. No, that's not how you reach people. You reach people one on one. You just, you, you, they need to see you. They need to see the glory of God in you. And if you don't give up, you'll see the glory. Okay. So, so too much information. Okay. Adam. God just took Adam and formed him of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. Now can I share with you, um, in the Spanish Bible, the Reign of Valera, 1916, I'm going to say it in Spanish and then I'm going to read the Amplified Bible in English. But in Spanish, it says, uh, and this is Genesis 2 and 7, entonces Jehová, Dios formó al hombre del polvo de la tierra y sopló en su nariz aliento de vida. Y fue el hombre un ser viviente. Now, ser viviente means a living being. And this is what 
Genesis 2, 7 says in the Amplified Bible, Then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and the man became a living being. Now, you've got to understand this. Being comes from God. Being comes from God. Personality comes from God. Your interior nature comes from God. Mentality comes from God. The capacity to think, the capacity to feel, the, your emotions, your desires, all of these things come from God. And when these things are out of whack, then that's when man goes crazy. When these things are not aligned with God, then that's what brings on depression. That's what brings on insanity. That's what brings on all these other things because your heart your being is not aligned with the holy one of israel see see so 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 this thinking being god has god gave adam being see and then god gave adam revelation in verse 17 same chapter 2 God says to Adam, of verse 16, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So God is giving Adam how to stay alive. Obedience will maintain your life. Disobedience will bring death to you. That's what God is saying. Adam didn't know that. Adam didn't know how he was going to stay alive. Adam didn't know anything. But if you be obedient, but the day you are disobedient, and so, so God is giving Adam revelation. Wow. And you ever thought the very presence of God is a revelation when you think about when God showed himself to Moses Moses was was praying and he said God show me your glory and then God God said this is what I'm going to do Moses this is what uh, um, uh, uh, uh. God said I will make all my goodness pass before thee and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious and will show mercy on whom I will show mercy. And he said, thou canst not see my face, for there shall no man see me and live. And the Lord said, behold, there is a place by me, and thou shalt stand upon a rock, and it shall come to pass while my glory passeth by, that I will put thee in a cleft of the rock, and I will cover thee with my hand while I pass by, and I will take away my hand, and thou shalt see my back parts, but my face shall not be seen. And when God came and began to show himself, the Lord descended in a cloud and stood before him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed by before him and proclaimed the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abundant in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions and sin that will, that will, that will by no means clear the guilt visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children upon the children's children unto the third and fourth generation and when God's presence passed by hallelujah this is what happened Moses made haste and bowed his head towards the earth and worshiped That's what the presence of God is all about. We, we Pentecostals got mixed up because we started speaking in tongues and, and, and we thought that was the thing. No, no, no. That was supposed to bring you into worship. That was supposed to let you know that God is in you. The Holy Spirit is in you. The Father is in you. And the Word is being kept through you. And God is speaking through you. The glories of God. And you were supposed to try to defend the fact that you speak in tongues. No, you were supposed to worship. And when the church learns to worship, when the church learns to walk with God in worship and 
faith, then the world will believe that God is in them. We too busy arguing. Cessationism. Okay, God don't do that anymore. Yes, he do. One side said, God don't do that anymore. The other side says, yes, he do. Well, if he does, let's worship. Let's forget about that argument. That's what the devil is trying to do. See? You keep arguing when you're supposed to be walking in revelation. See? They want to argue who got the right doctrine. I'm going to tell you, nobody got the complete and right doctrine. Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I was praying one day. I remember this. I was, I was praying. I was crying because my the church I was pastoring wasn't growing. And I said, well, God, they said this, this is it. And we say this. And who's right? And the Lord just told me just plain as day, I am the way. I am the way. And that's it. He is the way. So, so too much information. Too much information. So, so God brings Eve into the picture. And you know the story. Yeah, as God said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden. And the woman said unto the man, you may eat, we may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God said, ye shall not eat of it. Neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the servant, the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. Too much information. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be open, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Too much information. And the woman, and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took the fruit thereof and did eat. And gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. And the eyes of them both were open. Now, you see this. She ate it, and her husband was right there with her, and he ate it. Now, I don't know if she said anything. I can only imagine... I'm not going to go there. <laughs> and the eyes of them both were open. And they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made them aprons. Okay, this ought to be able to do something in the predicament that we're in right now. But it wasn't enough. And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God against the trees of the garden. Now, you see what happens when you get too much information and you start acting on information instead of revelation. And you know that things aren't right, but then you cover up and then you hide. And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and I hid myself. And he said, Who told thee 
that thou was naked. Who did you talk to? Where did you get your information? Too much information. Where did you get that information from? And just going on. Verse 17, chapter 3, Genesis. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. and had, So she did say something. <laughs> because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife and has eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. But I just want us to look at this for a minute. Now we're looking at society. Now we're looking at culture. And, 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 and Adam had made up his mind. He preferred to listen to his wife than listen to God. And God said, because you did, you curse. Now we have... Eve, you have, who talked to the devil? Who talked to the serpent? Who answered the serpent? Okay, who obeyed the serpent? And what does that say about Eve? She was influenced by the serpent and not by the revelation of God. Do, are, 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 she said something. But she didn't say what God said. A whole lot of people are saying things, but they're not saying what God said. A whole lot of information out there, but they're not telling us what God is saying to us. There's a whole lot. You know, you need, you need, you know, God made us to, be, to, to use our own mind. Is that what the Bible said? I make my own decisions. I'm my own boss. Is that what the Bible said? Huh? What's, what's, what's Proverbs 3 and 4, 5? What, what does it say? In all, oh, come on, trust in the, no, trust in, uh, the, trust in where you got the information from. No, trust in the, trust in the newscast. Trust in, 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 in the, 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 the consultants. Trust in who? The Lord. And do what? Don't lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, do what? No, 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 no. You got to listen to the, to the prognosticators. And other, in all thy ways, what? Acknowledge him. That's right. He shall bring it to. Uh, wow. He shall direct thy path. Wow. Is, 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 uh, is, is this making any sense? Okay. So, this is society. This is culture. Society is going to tell you a whole lot of things. But society is society is satanically influenced. I, there's no other way to say it. I'm, you know, you try to be um, a little bit. Uh, but I'm not saying they're demon-possessed. I'm saying they're satanically influenced. And just in case there's somebody that doesn't agree with me, Ephesians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul, under the anointing and direction of the Holy Spirit, in chapter 2, starting at verse 1, he says, And you hath he quickened. <clears throat> who were dead in trespasses and sins, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of what? Of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past, the lust of our flesh, Time pass in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, 
even as others. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4. Let me share with you just so you understand. I got a new Bible. I can't hardly turn the pages. Uh -huh. Paul says in verse 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. So we just... we. we we got to get rid of all the information and get back to the one basic. It's easier to listen to one God than eight billion people. It's easier to listen to God than all your friends. It's easier to listen to God than your mama and daddy. Amen, brother. <laughs> but you understand? So, so, so the devil came and got Adam off of, off of the rock that he was on, off of the revelation that he was on. Jesus, the devil came to Jesus. And I, I think I'll just close with this. But the devil came to Jesus. Oh, my Lord. The devil came to Jesus in Luke chapter 4. And it's just amazing to me because we always repeat this, but, but there, there's something to this. The devil came to Jesus. If thou be the son of God, command this stone that it be, made, that it be made bread. Jesus answered him, saying, It is written that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. It is written. And the devil took him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said unto him, All this power will I give thee, and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. And to whomsoever I will give it. If thou therefore wilt worship me, all shall be thine. <laughs> Jesus answered and said unto him, Get thee behind me, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Now, there's a whole lot in there, and I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to try to get into it, but um, that voice, I'll just say it like this, that voice that says, you got to give the people something. You got to give the people what they Whose voice is that? What does God say? You don't worship the people. Worship God. Does that make it? You don't. When David built the temple, he didn't build the temple or Solomon, rather, but when David was preparing for the temple, he said in, in the last verse in First Chronicles 29, or, or the last few verses in there, he said, I'm building a temple, and it's not for man. It's for God. I think when we as pastors make that determination, this place is for God. And trust God for the outcome. We're here for God. That, that, does that make any sense to you? So what we're going to do is everything to glorify God. Everything to exalt God. Everything to bring in the presence of God. And if we bring in the presence of God, then people will come. 
because people are hungry. People are thirsty. People are dry. People don't know where to go. But when they see, there's an answer over there. There's somebody over there, and I'm not talking about I'm not talking about Pastor Stafford. I'm not talking about Pastor Rick. There's somebody else over there, and every time I go in, I, I don't see him, but I feel him because he's there. He's there. But anyway, Jesus, Satan keeps going. Ugh. If thou be the son of God, cast thyself down from this, this pinnacle of the temple. Cast thyself down. For it is written, he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in their hands. They shall, and, and in their hands they shall bear thee up. Lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot upon a stone. You have to be aware of when the voice is twisting God's scriptures. And Jesus answered and said, it is said, thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Now, this is the point I want to get to. It, 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 Jesus says, you know, it is written, it is written, it is said, but, but, but there's something else behind that. You know, a lot of times we say we, it is written, but there's nothing there. We, you know, we try to quote, but th there's nothing behind it. It's just, it's just up here. It is written but it's not in here. And so Jesus says something, and this is, uh, I'm going to close with this. Jesus says uh, uh, in, in, in John chapter 5, let's just go in John chapter 5, and this will tell us a little bit about where Jesus was when he was, and, and where he expects us to be. Now, Jesus says something to, to, to the Pharisees, and this is what he says to them in, in chapter 5 in, in verse uh, 38. Chapter 5, verse 38. This is what Jesus said to the, to the Pharisees. Oh, I'll start at verse 37. And the Father himself, which hath sent me, hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time, nor seen his shape. And ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he hath sent him ye believe not. In other words, his word is not abiding in you. You don't have the revelation. You don't have what God is trying. If you, if you, if you had, had, had waited on me, if you had, had, had gotten the words from my mouth, as, as God said through Jeremiah to those false prophets, if they had waited and got the words from my mouth, they would have delivered the, my people from their sins, but they didn't hear from me. They gave prophecy out of their own heart, out of their own mind. But if they had just waited, now what does that mean? Brothers and sisters, it's going to take a little time. God's going to have to deal with you. I'm going to share this testimony because I, I'm so, so, so proud and I'm, I'm the recipient of it. But, but, but my, my wife, and she didn't know I was going to do this. I hope she don't get mad at me after I finish. But, but, but my wife, my wife, she, she just talked to the Lord the beginning of this year, you know, COVID and all that stuff. She just talked to the Lord and just said, you know, I want, I, I want God to give me a revelation of, of, of unconditional love. And, 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 and at first it was a little bit rough, you know. She had to deal with me. But, <laughs> but, but, but she, she, she stuck by it, man. She didn't give up. And she kept going. And, 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 and now she's so sweet. I don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> but the point is, the point is, she started getting a revelation of God's unconditional love. The love, the love started getting into her. And the word started getting into her. And, 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 and she started exemplifying and speaking uh, uh, differently and acting a little bit differently. I don't know if she had to go too far, but she, I mean, she was pretty good before. But anyway... <laughs> Anyway, she, she started changing. I, I started noticing the change. I was like, whoa. And I just said, man, you better get on your P's and Q's. You better get right with God. Like, 
But Jesus is saying something here, that, that you have not his word abiding in, that word in your heart, that word stirring you, that word living in you, that power of God. See, there's power in the word, but the power's got to be in you. And Paul says that, that, that according to the power that worketh in us, if there's no word, there's no power. Because the Holy Spirit don't have anything to work with. He wants to. He, he, I imagine. No, I won't say that. But anyway, if there's no word, there's no power. The Holy Ghost can't work through you. You're just babbling. And, 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 and yes, the Spirit is on you. But until you get the word in you, until the Holy Spirit got something to work with, you're going to always be off balance. You're going to always not know where to go. But when the Holy Spirit got something to work with, then you will be on point. And when you speak, men will hear. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So Jesus says something. I'm going to close with this. Uh, Jesus, in, in verses 17 through 44, chapter 5, St. John, you can, you can read these things uh, uh, later on. But this is what Jesus said, verse 19 and verse 30. Verily I say unto you, the Son of Man can do nothing of himself, but what he see the Father do. For what things soever he doeth, these also doeth the Son likewise. Verse 30. I can of my own self do nothing. As I hear, I judge. And my judgment is just because I seek not my own will, but the will of the Father which hath sent me. When are we going to start doing things on our own and begin to follow the, the Lord and stop doing uh, and do like Jesus. I can't do anything of myself. I don't seek my own will, but the will of the Father who sent me. Verse 20, Jesus says, For the Father loveth the Son and showeth him all things that himself doeth, and he will show him greater works than these that ye may marvel. The Father loves it and showeth him what the God will show you what to do. Even not necessarily, you're going to see visions, not necessarily. You're going to have dreams, not necessarily. But in the word, God will show you what he wants done. God will show you how to respond. God will show you what it's going to take to advance in his spirit. God will show you what it's going to take to stand firm in the evil day. Verse 37, Jesus says, the Father himself which hath sent me hath borne witness of me. Ye have neither heard his voice at any time nor seen his. It's the Father who gives witness. Now that is just the anointing. It's the Father who gives witness that he is with you. It is the Father who gives witness that what you are saying is true. It's the Father who gives testimony to Jesus in you. It's the Father who gives testimony. You see, we try to do too many things from here, but what we need is something coming from here, something that comes out from here. I try to tell our members all the time, Stop coming from here and come from here. Let God deal with you and let God fill you with his Holy Spirit. Let God deal with you so that you will have something to say to somebody when it's time. Jesus keeps going. Verse 39, search the scriptures for in them ye think ye have life and they are they which testify of me. The scriptures testify of Christ, Old and New Testament, from Genesis to Revelation, they testify of Christ. And when the church begins to put itself under the authority of Christ, when we stop dealing with all the information and deal with the one God, then we will see, hallelujah, we will see the witness of Christ come from us. Then finally, Jesus says, verse 41 through 44, I receive not honor from men. I'm not looking for honor from men. You see, when you walk, when you walk in, in God's truth, in what God has revealed, I'm not worried about all the information. Following Jesus. Amen. And Jesus says, to them, how can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Mm -hmm. 
from God only. That's a word for the church. The honor that cometh from God only. Whoa. Whoa. I'll leave that right there. So what are we seeking? What do we want to achieve? What are we looking for? Who do we plan on? Trying to please. Who are we listening to? Wow. Let's just stand. I, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I don't really don't know where to go from here. But if God is speaking to somebody, I don't know, maybe you're challenged. Um, society has got a whole bunch of things going on. But God is saying to us, like he said to Israel, Look unto me. And Jesus says, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden. I will give you rest. Look unto me, all ye ends of the earth. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. I don't know what you're facing. I don't know. But I know Jesus is the answer. And I know God is the answer. So if you feel the need to come up and pray, just come right on. And I'm going to pray. I, I just believe God has shared something with us this morning. We all face, we all face the pressure of the culture. But it's easier to listen to God than to listen to a whole bunch of other voices. I'll share this with you. People don't think pastors have problems, but I had a serious problem one time. I, I thought I was going to go into depression so bad it wasn't going to come out. And I just shut everything off, shut everything out, got my word. I said, God, this is your word. I need your help. I need your help. still here still in my right mind not depressed hallelujah walking in daily victory hallelujah 